You see, the uh, both systems are very responsive. The Odroid XU4Q, to me, has more of, at least out of the box, has more of a desktop computer feel to it. The responsiveness is is like a desktop computer as well, but the operating system feels very desktop computer-ish. Uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspbian has done a fantastic job of making it feel that way as well, but it, it has a bit of a... A bit of a, I don't know, not quite a desktop feel to it. it. It's not quite as powerful, and it has a little bit of latency to it. Uh, so over on the Raspberry Pi 3, first thing I want to test is uh, we're going we're gonna to run a uh, probably a 30-second test uh, using stress ng. So stress-ng, and we're going to tell it to use all CPU cores, and we're going to test two IOs. We're going to do virtual memory with one gig blocks. And we're going to go for 30 seconds. And then we'll get the metrics brief at the end. I'm going to run that. And we're going to jump over to the Odroid XU4Q. And we're going to run exactly the same command. So stress ng dash dash CPU zero. IO2 Okay, we're going to let that run on the Odroid XU4Q. Jumping back to the Raspberry Pi, how are things looking? Hasn't been 30 seconds yet. There we go. Okay, so first of all, we're looking at BOGO ops. How many BOGO ops is it? <laughs> What's a BOGO op? Again, we're not getting scientific here. A BOGO op is a bogus operation. Oh, okay. Okay? So how many bogus operations can these boards process on their CPUs, on their IOs, and their virtual memory? That's what we're looking at. So it's not a scientific number. It's simply a comparative that we can take two boards side by side and say, you know, they operate with this many bogus operations per second. So looking at the Raspberry Pi 3... How many BOGO ops do we get per second? So looks like CPU is about 23.04 and the IO is 23,700. Jumping back over to the Odroid XU4. Let's see if we can bring that up a little bigger. Oh, and it figures it wrapped it to the next line. Uh, okay, so looking at the same thing, 29.07 for the CPU and 5347 for the, that is IO sync. Let's jump back to Raspberry Pi. 23, no, I gotta run that again because it's not, I can't, <laughs> I can't do the side-by-side -side comparison. Let's run it again, same thing. Now, because we've specified CPU zero, this is gonna use eight cores on this particular device. and simply give us some numbers to compare. Oh, that is the time. That's the time. Bogo Ops. I'm looking at the completely wrong column. Look at the left-hand side there. <laughs> 1,906 for the CPU and 906,000 for the IO. All right. What do we got here? 5,234 for CPU versus the 1,906 on the Raspberry Pi. So we're about five times, well, four times faster CPU, and IO Sync is 129,000 on the Odroid. And again, now how, do, how does it think it's 906,000? Although this is a different IO Sync versus IO, they're not the same test. And we want everything to be exactly side by side comparable but we can't compare that value because they're not a comparable value. That could be a version of stress NG that's giving us a little bit of a, an off-putting value. So we're gonna look at just the CPU where CPU on the Raspberry Pi is comparable at 1906 to the value of 5234 on the Odroid XU4Q. 
So again, not scientific, but it gives us an idea that it's about four times faster just in this bogus operations. Um, the IO stuff, they're not a, compar a comparative side by side, so we can't use that number, but CPU is about um, four times faster. Okay, jumping back to the Raspberry Pi, let's test the network interface. Now, I've got a, uh, a CL100 from Logic Supply connected to the same gigabit Ethernet switch as both of these devices. It's running uh, iPerf as a server. And that means I can basically send um, packets to it and receive them back, and it will give me a benchmark of my uh, the network speed. Okay, So you have to have a receiving server on the other end, and it has to be connected to a gigabit switch. So on the Raspberry Pi 3, let's type iPerf dash C, and the IP address of that iPerf server, which is 192.168.0.101, we're going to run 10 simultaneous connections, and we're going to run it for 30 seconds. There we go. Now, over here on the other device, this is the Odroid XU4Q. Let's run that exact same command, iPerf dash C, 192.168.0.101 dash P10 dash T. 30. And notice I'm not going to hit enter until the Raspberry Pi is finished because that would be an unfair benchmark because, of course, this one is already using the bandwidth. So we got to do this one at a time. Raspberry Pi should be wrapping up. There we go. I'm going to hit enter on the other device here and let that run while we look at these specifications. So, uh, at the, so basically what we're seeing there is the bandwidth megabits per second on all 10 connections and then the summary at the end, which is a, a, an average over 30 seconds. So we're getting 94.2 megabits per second. Now, with the 100 megabit Ethernet adapter in a Raspberry Pi 3, that's pretty significant. That's 92% of its overall promised um, speed is being achieved. So that's pretty good. Jumping over to the Odroid XU4Q, the average is 926 megabits per second. So again, we're getting about 92% of the promised speed, uh, but in this case, we have gigabit Ethernet. So the speed of the Ethernet connection is about 10 times faster uh, on the Odroid XU4Q than on the Raspberry Pi 3. So if you're using this for a server, if you're using this to um, like run a NAS box or something like that, this is definitely going to be the, the, the Pi killer for sure um, as far as that goes. Another reason you would want that faster network connection, Plex servers. Mm -hmm. If you want to do multimedia streaming, that kind of thing, that's much, much faster. The final test that we're going to do here, Becca, because I know this is running into the, the geekery beyond measure. But we are measuring it, don't worry. The geekery <laughs> is high with this one. Uh, okay, so on each of these systems, I've installed um, Cat5 TV miners. You can find that on our GitHub, Cat5 uh, Cat TV on uh, GitHub. There's an application called uh, Cat5 TV miners, and uh, we're going to mine Monero with each of these boards. So let's see how many hashes per second each of these can do. So on each system, I've got it already installed. This is the Raspberry Pi 3. I'm going to let that connect and get a couple of jobs from the pool. And over here on the Odroid XU4, we're going to do the same thing. Monero. And we're going to let that connect and grab from the pool. Now, it looks like they're both connecting to Hash Vault. Yeah. So we've got the same pool. We've got uh, the same application, the same version. Everything is exactly the same between them just different hardware. So this is the Raspberry Pi 3. We've got two jobs, looks like, um, just waiting for any hashes per second um, to be reported. Same with the Odroid XU4Q, just waiting for any kind of report as far as how many hashes per second we're getting. This could take a couple of moments. We'll take this opportunity just to mention a little bit about Cat5 TV dash miners. Um, that's a cool way that you can support Category 5 TV network uh, because you can install this on your computer, your SBC, on whatever. And when you're not using those devices, it will mine Monero and deposit it to Category 5 TV. Uh, so it's a really interesting way for you to be able to support the shows uh, here at Category 5 while not actually spending anything other than just you know, using your hardware and, and uh, possibly electricity. You know, might bump up the electricity bill a little bit if, you're, if you've got a supercomputer. 
That would take a really powerful. With the SBC, it's not going to be an issue. You're not going to be running up a lot. So that's the Raspberry Pi. We're getting 8.2 hashes per second. 8.2 hashes per second. It's not high, but it's something. Over on the uh, Odroid XU4Q, we're getting 25.7 hashes per second. Again, a significant jump in performance when it comes to the Odroid XU4Q. So if you were looking at using an SBC for mining, this is CPU mining granted, so we're not using GPU mining here because the Raspberry Pi 3 just wouldn't be able to handle that. So with CPU mining, we're getting about 8 on the Raspberry Pi 3 and about 23, did I say, on the uh, XU4. 25, almost 26. And there's the Raspberry Pi 3. It's gone down to 7. 7.7. The Odroid is holding its own at 24.7. So definitely getting better hash rates on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah.